Now we're going to learn how to add a new agent on your Augie Tech predictive dialing system. There are three steps to creating a new agent on your system. Step one is to go to free PBX in the email that was sent to you. Uh, the login uh, information that was sent for your dialer. Go to where it says free PBX login and you'll see this screen here after you've logged in. The first step is to go to extensions on the left and we're going to create a new extension on the system. So we've already got extensions 101 to 103 created. We're simply going to hit submit because our default choice of generic SIP device is exactly what we want. So we simply hit submit and we're going to create 104. So the user extension is always simply numbers, the number of the extension you're creating, 104. The display name can be anything you'd like uh, for numerical purposes and to keep everything organized. I'm going to say agent 104 because that's the sequence that we followed so far. So the, the, uh, the next step is to go down to where it says secret and we're going to create a password for this extension. Now the password can be anything you'd like. Um, I recommend that you have at least eight characters long, both numbers and letters, just for security purposes. You don't want to make it easy, otherwise uh, people will be able to log into your system and, and arbitrarily make calls and you will be responsible for those calls. So you want to make it uh, very hard for them to figure out, but easy for you to remember. And, and if anything fails, of course, you can always come back to free PBS extensions, click on the extension that you're looking for, and you'll find the password or, or the secret listed right here. Now, you've, you can scroll down to where it says uh, voicemail and directory. If you'd like to enable voicemail for this extension, you simply uh, go to status and click on enabled. And then we simply create a password for the voicemail. We're going to select 1234 just to keep it simple here. You also have the ability to uh, send the recorded message. If someone calls that extension and leaves them a message, you can have that message emailed to them as an attachment. So you can just click on email attachment, yes, play the uh, caller ID information, play the envelope, which is the date and time. Um, you have a couple selections here. But if you'd like that to be done, please make sure that you're including the email address that you'd like the file to be sent to. So we can choose our email here. And when we're done, we simply hit submit. And we've created our extension 104. Now, please note that when you're in free PBX, every change that you make, you'll notice that it's going to ask you to apply the configuration changes on top with the orange bar. If you do not click that orange bar, then your changes would not be, uh, they will not take effect. So we simply hit apply configuration changes, continue with reload, and now we can officially say that we've created extension 104. So this is step one. Step two towards creating an agent on the system is to go to the VCDAL admin login, which again was sent to you in the admin uh, login email. And then we go to users. We're going to be here by default as soon as we log in. You'll notice that your uh, users, the, the module for users is right here at the top. You've got users, campaigns, lists. Um, we're going to go over certain, uh, other modules and other videos that we're going to be covering here. Uh, but we want to concentrate on users. This is step two. We're going to create a new user. So we simply hit add a new user here. The user number is going to be 104 to keep consistent with the extension that we've just created. Now the password we can make uh, as simple or as hard as we'd like. Um, this is simply the password that they're using to log into the agent interface. It does not have to be the same. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's, it's best if it's not the same as the extension password or, or the secret that you're going to be configuring the soft phone with. This is simply the, uh, the password that they're using to log into the system. Now the full name, I'm going to keep it consistent. I'm going to call this Agent 104. And what I like to do also is you can uh, put a dash after that just so you can uh, identify who that agent is. If you've got names, you can call it Bob or Joe or uh, Sarah, whoever it is. Um, you can put the agent name here. Parentheses. Now, the user level is always going to be 1 because uh, the higher the level, the more ad, uh, access they have to the admin interface should they ever log into the screen. Um, by the way, the agents should not ever log into the admin interface. Um, their place is the agent interface. We have uh, the user group. We're going to choose agents for them. And then the phone login and password are going to be the exact same as the user number and password as well. So we're going to make this 104. And then the password is 1234. When we're done, we'll hit Submit. 
and now we've created a user. Now, what I like to do is for the admin, I'm sorry, the agent interface options, I set everything to one. One simply means that they're able to uh, access or, or, or have these options take effect on the agent interface. Zero means that it's off. So uh, in terms of hotkeys being active, we're going to make that one. Hotkeys you know, is simply uh, a feature on the agent interface that allows the agent to click a button on their keyboard so that it'll hang up the call in this position as whatever that number on the keyboard that they pressed is set at. And then that's set here on the admin interface. Now if you've got any questions about what any of these options mean, you can simply click on the question mark next to it and it'll give you a pop-up screen with an explanation of what it is. For instance, I clicked on the one for hotkeys active, set this option to one, allows the user to use the hotkeys quick dispositioning function in BCDAO. So it'll give you explanations of what each thing means here. If you have any further questions beyond that, feel free to contact our support team and we'll be more than happy to help you. So we're going to set everything here to one, unless you uh, deem uh, otherwise. Now the VC dial recording override, this is basically for the agents to be able to record uh, phone calls. So right now it's disabled, we're going to set it to either never, on demand, all calls, or all force. Uh, never means that they're not able to record. On demand means that they have the discretion to start or stop the recordings at will. All calls means that it's going to automatically start the recording for every call and the agent can choose to stop it at any time. And all force means that it's going to start recording in every call and stop it as soon as the call is done. The agent does not have the discretion to start or stop it. So we're just going to set this to on demand just by default so they have the option. And agent allow, uh, I'm sorry, agent alter customer data, we're going to set it to allow alter. Um, this is so they're able to change information as the lead comes up on the agent interface. If they have an incorrect address or incorrect last name or, or something to that effect, they're able to change it and uh, save the changes as they're done with the call. Now the admin interface options, again, should not be necessary for the agents unless you've got maybe a manager that you'd like to have limited access or supervisor not to be able to change too many things but to be able to change some things on the admin interface assuming that this agent is going to be logging in to the admin interface which is where we are right now I can choose whether he can review reports modify campaigns add leads etc by simply setting that to either one or zero one is on and zero is off of course so when I'm done here I simply hit submit and we've created step two of the process, creating a, a new user. Now, uh, creating more users in the future should be a lot easier because this option has the ability, instead of going from scratch and creating a new user, you can actually copy a user by clicking copy user. We're going to create 105 just so I can show you how it's done. 105. Password will make the same. 1234. We choose our full name. Agent 105, and then I'll put the agent name. And then the source user is basically what user you're copying from. So we're going to copy 104, which is the one we just created. And then we'll hit submit. And now we've just copied a user. Now we do have to go to that record by clicking the, the, the blue link here. And the last change we have to make is whenever we copy a user, Everything will be the exact same as you'll notice here, except for the phone login. Now the user number is 105, which is what we've just created, but the phone login is going to be the exact same as the one that we've copied it from. It's going to be the same as the source user. So we need to change that to reflect the user number, which is 105. Once that's complete, we simply scroll down, hit submit, and we're finished with step two, or we're finished copying a user.